You can tell by the name tag I'm not a permanent member, but I'm happy, Mr. <laughs> Chair, to be to be here again. It's always nice to be in the Finance Committee. And thank you to our witnesses uh, for joining us today. Uh, Mr. Bester, it's great to see you back again to talk about the changes to the Competition Act. We've had a series of bills to amend the Competition Act uh, in this Parliament. First was my bill. I had a Bill C-339 to eliminate the Efficiencies Defence. Uh, I had another private member's bill because that one was taken with the last government bill on open banking, which is always great. But uh, the government followed our lead with C-56 and C-59. And I know that we've had a lot of input from your group into these bills. But I want to first start with what is missing? What, what recommendations did not get included that are really important to, to this bill and to competition in Canada? Well, you know, there's a, a number of a laundry list, of course, but I, th I think we focus on the big areas where there's still room for improvement. As I mentioned, in the on the merger side of the house, taking that structure seriously, ensuring that our oligopoly situation doesn't ba continue to backslide for Canadians. Um, the second would be uh, on the abuse of dominance side. Are we addressing uh, the threat of abuse of dominance, or are we just waiting for Canadians to be harmed and, and reacting, and uh, well after the businesses may have, may have may have failed? Um, finally, I think there's an anchoring piece around the purpose of the competition law. We, we haven't looked at it since 1986. We're still too focused on things like efficiency that have led to consolidation. So if there were three big areas, I think it's mergers, abuse of dominance, and, and the core purpose of the legislation. We're talking a lot about promoting and protecting competition in Canada because Canada has a monopoly problem. The result of that is Canadians pay some of the highest prices in the world, in particular for banking for cell phones and for airlines. It's going back to your mergers, and if it's not addressed in this bill, this government has been involved in approving three mergers that have hurt Canadians, Rogers, Shaw, R R RBC, HSBC, and WestJet, and Sunwing. Are you aware of the reports that show, that, that come from a lot of academics in North America that, America that show that mergers have resulted 95% in price increases and can you comment on what these mergers being approved have meant to Canadians? Well, there's a wide academic literature, you're right, on the uh, effect of mergers on factors like prices, but not limited to also including things like quality and innovation. And, and what we see, I think there's mounting evidence that we need to have, again, as I say, this bias against mergers, especially in uh, already concentrated markets. We need to look at what kind of growth we want to have. Is it paper growth through acquisition? or is it through investment, hiring Canadians, and, and offering new products? You, you touched on in your opening, not only does this hurt Canadians, uh, their pocketbooks, it, it's also workers. So through our monopoly problem, uh, what happens with, with these mergers of monopolies, and I think we want to make that very clear, the merger changes that we need to make to the Competition Act are on monopolies. It's the abuse of dominance, it's mergers as a whole, but when these companies get bigger, then the market power also extends to workers' wages and their ability to squeeze workers' wages, to be able to collude to keep workers' wages down. The fact that if there's less employers to choose from, uh, that there is less choice for employers in which to, to bring their skill sets and have wages. So what effect is the fact that we have more mergers uh, with monopolies having effect on wages and workers in Canada? Well, you know, this is some analytical work that we need to engage in, but in the U.S., um, there's been evidence of highly concentrated labor markets, even in, you know, we might think about rural or remote communities, but even in, you know, relatively large urban centers. So what we need to think about, Canada having relatively higher levels of concentration, having more oligopolies than our friends in the U.S., um, that, that if it would make sense that that effect is, you know, the same or magnified where workers are limited and can be, you know, prior to changes, frozen out uh, through agreements like uh, no poach and, uh, and wage fixing. So one of your uh, recommendations is structural presumptions. Uh, and as you've stated, this law does not include presumption against mergers in already concentrated industries. Does that mean that the mergers that have already been approved, so HSBC, RBC, Rogers, Shaw, will continue if this bill goes through in its current form? You know, this bill does make improvements, as I mentioned. Pulling in structure, again, is something we should pay attention to. The law doesn't totally ignore it, but it really deprecates it. So if we really want to guarantee that we don't have another Rogers Shaw, that we don't have another RBC, HSBC, we need to take that next step and, and really encode that, that bias against further concentration. 
And then tell me about some of your other recommendations for merger remedies. Uh, you talked about strong and simple remedies, open-ended merger review, uh, creeping roll-ups. Tell us about how those could be changes or amendments that would strengthen this bill to ensure we, we stop some of these mergers that are hurting Canadians. You know, focusing on the remedies piece, which I think is the most important, right now in Canada, if we intervene in a merger, which we do very rarely, less than 1% of mergers, um, the standard is not to restore competition, it's to make the reduction in competition slightly less. The U.S., the EU, they put the bar much higher, and they say if we're going to intervene against a merger, things should be at least as good as they were before uh, for citizens. And, and I think that's, uh, if we had to pick one, I would really go there. Last question, I might get another round with you, but uh, what would you change the purpose statement to be if it was going to be uh, changed to remove uh, the, pri prior the priority right now, it seems to be on efficiency of the company over competition? I don't have a prepared text, but I think a, a phrase that I'd really like to see in there is fair competition, and again, competition that benefits Canadians, both as, as you said, consumers, workers, and entrepreneurs, as opposed to the efficiency uh, that we've seen, uh, so I think mistakenly drive us towards oligopoly.